In this video I will look at sideband noise caused by 47 PF capacitors at 10 MHz and at a frequency separation of 50 kHz. I will use this vacuum tube low noise oscillator which is at something like minus 164 dBc per Hertz. Uh, after it I will use this notch filter. It has a notch 50 kilohertz below the signal, so it is 9.95 where the notch is. It looks like this. Uh, the notch is about 40 dB deep, and the attenuation at 10 megahertz is about half a dB. The impedance, of course, is 50 ohms. Uh, otherwise it couldn't have such a low loss and that is 50 ohms at 10 megahertz at the notch the impedance is almost uh, capacitive it is 300 pf uh, I want to shift the phase of this from capacitive to uh, high impedance resistive. It means I need a three quarter wave cable here. With the three quarter wave cable, I get this situation. Uh, it's still 50 ohms at uh, 10 megahertz, but where the standing wave is high, the face is rotated, so now I have about 300 ohms. Uh, so I can now connect a selective load on the notch frequency. Then I get this situation. Uh, and as you can see, uh, both markers are very close to 50 ohms. And the reason is that the signal that I present to the test object has to come from approximately 50 ohms, but uh, the low noise amplifier has to look into 50 ohms, and if I had used the uh, notch filter directly, the impedance was pretty far, it was about 300 ohms and capacitive. So I wouldn't know what the noise figure would be of the low noise amplifier. But now, uh, knowing that it is 50 ohms on the notch frequency, I can trust the noise figure of the amplifier I will be using. This is the internals of the notch filter. It is two LC circuits, this one and that one. Uh, they are connected to the input ca uh, connectors through a capacitor, 220 PF. And then these two resonators are coupled with a small capacitor here. And both resonators are loaded by this group of three crystals, this one and that one. The crystals are 10 MHz crystals, and I have turned down the frequency by 50 kHz by putting a big inductor in series. This makes the Q uh, very much degraded, but that doesn't matter. I don't need better Q than this, because it is good enough to not have any significant attenuation at 10 MHz. And I have tweaked a little bit here to uh, uh, make the impedance close to 50 ohms in both directions and that is in order to get a low attenuation through this notch at 10 megahertz. This is the inside of the selective load uh, 50 kilohertz below 10 megahertz. So it's a 50 ohm or rather 47 ohm resistor here and then it goes through a group of three crystals, 10 MHz crystals, that are tuned down to 
9.95 megahertz by use of this inductor. I'm now uh, looking into the selective load uh, through the long cable and then taking out the signal uh, into the network analyzer. So uh, the impedance seen by uh, the low noise amplifier is very close to 50 ohms on uh, the frequency of interest. This one where I will look for noise. Uh, the impedance that will generate a signal, uh, the strong signal, is also 50 ohms. And the loss at 10 megahertz is 0.9 dB. So I'm losing 1 dB uh, in the notch filter and the, also the selective load that has some losses. And a little bit also in the cable. The red connector is the calibrated input to the network analyzer. And this one is the straight through wire. And I'm checking the impedance of the receive side, the test system, which consists of the directional coupler, selective notch, quarter wave cable, and then the notch and a quarter wave cable and another notch and another quarter wave cable and another notch and then a match box with which I can set the impedance that I will see at this point. Uh, and this match box is connected to this low noise amplifier. You might have seen this arrangement in a previous video. What I see is this there are two frequencies of interest, that's 10 MHz, it is marker number 1, and 9.95 MHz, that's 50 kHz below, that's marker number 2. And you can see they are within half an ohm or so from 50. So that is satisfactory and nice. Now I will show an interesting phenomenon. Uh, First I change the averaging, I mean system bandwidth, because it's very slow now. It's like that. And you see the curve is more noisy, but it's more rapid. And then I change the power. Power uh, minus 40 dBm. And you could see a small change of the impedance. Uh, and then I increase the power to minus 30 dBm and something much more different at marker 2. But marker 1 doesn't change or very little. Uh, and then more power uh, minus 20 and you can see now the amplifier is saturated and the impedance is very different. But uh, at 10 MHz there is no difference. So I change the scale and you can see now uh, and I can increase the power a little bit more uh, minus 10 dBm power minus 10 and you can see here uh, things go really wrong so the low noise amplifier is easily saturated but it doesn't see any strong signals so that doesn't matter now I'm checking the noise figure on the receive side with this noise head and I switch it on and it's set for 7.4 dB noise figure 7.4 and this is what I see on the Linrad screen so the noise floor I have adjusted 
the calibration to make it show zero, I hope. 0 0.02. So that's close enough. And then here with the noise source running I have 3.18. So the noise is a little too high. The noise figure is a little better than uh, 7.4. I try instead 7.2 and I have to wait a little and then look here 3.07 so I can say that the noise figure is uh, 7.2 dB. I look at the power uh, that comes from the transmit side uh, with way of measuring powers that I have. It's on 50 ohms internal load and the voltage is 15.75 and that corresponds to 0 0.62 watts. On the network analyzer the signal from the directional coupler is 7.87 dBm. So I feed in 7.87 minus the carrier power that I have established, 0.62 watts, and then this formula to get it in dBm. So uh, the calibration is 20 dB, fairly accurately. I'm now measuring the sideband noise uh, with the straight through wire as the test object. The noise level I see is uh, 0.33 dBm. Well, once more, so you can see better. Uh, point 0.33 and I insert a lot of attenuation 100 dB uh, to supply a 50 ohm source impedance uh, with no signal present or almost no signal present just to verify where is the noise floor because I'm looking for the noise increment when applying the strong signal. And this noise floor is 0.01, so it's within the statistical uncertainty. The noise increase is 0.32 dB, or I go for a wider range. And then I would say 0.33 dB. And I remove the attenuation and see that the power is 7.9 dBm. I feed the number into this spreadsheet and then I find that the uh, noise is minus 206 dBc per hertz. The noise increment here, uh, the signal I find on the coupler, on that is on the uh, net, on the spectrum analyzer. No attenuation on the HP attenuator. Uh, 0.33 dB means a factor of 1.079, which means that the added power is 0.079. Uh, that means that the noise added uh, by whatever is the limitation of the system is at minus 177 dBm per hertz. And the carrier, it is, since we know here, 27.95. Uh, 
means dBc per hertz is minus 205.8 or minus 206 and the rest will be when I look for capacitors now I insert 1 dB of attenuation and we should expect uh, 1 dB less signal here 6.8 we should have seen a lower noise here, but that's not what happens. The noise floor actually goes up. And now I see 0.68 dB. So I feed the numbers in here and find that the uh, sideband noise has increased from minus 206 to minus 201 means that the noise of the attenuator 1 dB step is about minus 201 dBc per hertz so I check the 2 dB attenuator where I read 5.8 dBm here and the noise went down uh, it's now 0 0.41 and I find the 2 dB step is a little bit better but not much and I don't know whether it's significant and I try 3 dB and the noise seems to go up a little bit which means that the 3 dB step is not so good I should have expected the noise to go down not up so reading this Point 0.56 and the power is of course plus 4.8 on this spectrum analyzer the attenuator is pretty accurate the 3 dB step is a little bit worse at minus 200 well still pretty good actually uh, but it was a bad idea to put the stepped attenuator on the wrong side of the notch and uh, selective load. I will move it to sit on the other side of this 3 dB attenuator. Now the signal generator first goes through this 3 dB attenuator, then through the HP stepped attenuator, and I have set it to 100 dB to lot, not let any signal through just to present the 50 ohm load to the receiver and then the signal goes through the notch filter a quarter wave or a three quarter wave sorry and then the selective load to make sure I have 50 ohms here on both frequencies the straight through wire and into the test system the noise floor should not have changed so I look where we are 0.03 so that's close enough and then I put this to zero and I see that zero and zero and I see a small increase of the noise and I will evaluate that after a short time the noise floor now is 0.29 and I add 1 dB of attenuation here and now it behaves properly the noise floor did not go up uh, I will wait a few seconds, minutes maybe, to evaluate what happened with the attenuator inserted. 
And now the noise floor is lower, point twenty five two four seven. Now with the one dB attenuator here, uh, dBc per hertz didn't change significantly. There is some inaccuracy. Uh, with these very small noise increments, the accuracy of the linear power is very poor. So I have been seeing in the first experiment actually the noise of the stepped attenuator but putting it in front of the notch filter at the offset frequency, uh, I remove that. So the limit of measurements for the capacitors is about uh, minus 205 dBc per hertz now. So I will start to look at the capacitors. The first capacitor I look at is one of these. It says A2 co K. Maybe it's not an A, maybe it's a symbol of some kind. And then it says 4704, 447 PF. I have mounted one of them in this box uh, in series with a it, an inductor that I have tuned for resonance on 10 megahertz. And I'm looking at that with the network analyzer. And you can see the loss is 0.2 dB. And of course it doesn't change the impedance. It's tuned as a serious resonator here. The noise floor I see this is with the lid in place, is 0.43. And that is with a power reading of 7.4 on the spectrum analyzer. This is a N150 temperature compensating capacitor. And I think the manufacturer is EPCOS or possibly Philips. And I have tuned the coil for proper resonance. I have set the attenuator to 10 dB, zero here, and then I see a noisy signal. Not terribly strong, but clearly uh, not uh, stable. If I read it out, I find 0.61 dB. And I increase the level in steps of 1 dB. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see it becomes more, more noisy. And the full signal power, it looks like this. And back to 10 dB. This is an NP0 capacitor from EPCOS, rated 500 volts. This one is rather noisy. I increased the attenuation a little bit more. Well, at this level it might be okay to use it. The attenuator is on, does it say, 9 dB here and 20, so it's 29 dB. And the noise floor then is 0.6 dB. And the level on the coupler is minus 21.7. This is a small ceramic tube capacitor, very old I think, maybe from World War II even, it was surplus from some place. It gives some noise, some instability. Uh, now at this point the attenuator is at uh, 
can't see it. 10 dB here and 7 dB. 17. And this is what I see. So if I read this out, I take the average over a longer time, 1.3 dB. And that's at the power level of minus 9.8. This is a polystyrene capacitor. Attenuation is zero and zero. And the signal level is 7.5. And the noise floor is stable at the level of 0.38. This is a Mika capacitor rated 500 volts. I have to set 10 dB plus another 9 dB to get a reasonable noise floor. It's here at 1 dB and the signal level then is uh, minus 11.7 minus 11.8 maybe here is a ceramic tube capacitor I have set 0 and 0 so there is no attenuation the noise floor is stable unless I shake the table it's point 0.38 and the power uh, plus 7.5 this one is NP0 63 volts I have set 10 plus uh, 5 that's 15 dB uh, to get a reasonable noise floor, uh, 0.4 dB, at a power level of minus 7.8. This is a ceramic capacitor. Uh, it is in a glass enclosure. There is no attenuation now. Uh, I do see some noise, some unstable, but the level is not high, it's 0.7 dB and the power is uh, 7.5 dBm. This is a ceramic disc capacitor, NP0. There is no attenuation now. and. The noise is not so high, it's significant contribution from the capacitor and it's a bit unstable. It's 1.1 dB on the average. And the signal level 7.5 dBm. Here are the results. I have tested these capacitors as you have seen. Uh, None of them is bad, some are excellent and they are at uh, dBc per hertz around two, minus 200 or even better. So it is close to uh, the limitations of my test system. Then there are a couple of ones that are noisy, the Mika for example here. And one that is at minus 170, it's still reasonable. And uh, this is very different from what I have seen on the 10 PF capacitors.